I spent hours, many hours cleaning up this first batch of parts of the mill. As you can see what I started with, I had a lot to do. There's a link popping up in the upper right hand corner if you want to check out the process of the disassembly to this point. The knee was completely full of chips. The base was coated in coagulated oil. This was a well-used machine, but it wasn't cleaned very well. I went through probably three quarters of a gallon of degreaser. I couldn't tell you how many Scotch-Brite pads or rolls of paper towels, plus a few cans of brake cleaner on top of all of that. The saddle looked great. Um, all that dried up oil came out just fine. The table did have some scoring underneath and that might need some kind of work, but I will cross that bridge when I need to and when I come to it. But I think it was all worth it. I decided I didn't need to paint anything. I'm going to leave it as is. There are a few stains that wouldn't come out and there are plenty of dings and chips in the paint, but 90% of this machine is in fine condition. I picked up a gallon of this Hangsturfer's Way Oil number 2 that I planned on putting in the one-shot oiler. I'm going to use it as I put these pieces together, so I'm going to fill up this small Eagle oil can I picked up at an auction for like a buck. I'll give all of these parts a nice little bit of oil on them as they, uh, as they get assembled. Leave a comment. Let me know what kind of way oil you use on your machines. The first thing I have to do is put the pedestal back on the base. And this is just held down with two socket head cap screws. And then next to go on is the pedestal nut, the Z-axis nut. It's held down with three button head screws. One of these days I need to pick up a good set of T-handled wrenches for jobs like these. If you like this kind of content, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. I can now go ahead and put a good bit of oil on the Z-axis screw. I want to make sure I get a good bit on it. Um, since this Z-axis, um, this one isn't automatically lubricated by the one-shot oiler like the X and Y are. The next thing to install will be the knee casting itself onto the base. And again, I want to use plenty of oil on these column ways as well as the ways on the back of the knee. And I'm reusing this engine hoist that I borrowed from a friend of mine, again, to uh, lift the knee up and over the column dovetails. The knee isn't hanging exactly level, so once I get it up high enough, 
I'm grabbing the front of the knee and kind of pulling it down, leveling it off, and then lining it up with the dovetails. And then I can start to lower it uh, with the hoist. Once it's low enough and just about to reach the z-axis screw, I give it a little bit of a wiggle to line up the bearing in the knee with the shaft at the end of the screw. With the strap and the hoist out of the way, I can go ahead and reinstall the bevel gear back on the end of the z-axis screw. The first thing I need to do is put the key back in the keyway. Then I can install the gear and a small spacer and then lastly the nut. And before I go to install the gib, I want to make sure it's good and clean before soaking it in more of that whey oil. And as I install the gib into the way, I'm setting the gib retaining slash adjusting screw in place as well. For now, I'm going to adjust the gib so that it is just below the surface of the horizontal way. I need to learn a little bit more about adjusting these uh, before I make it too tight. The knee lock plunger is installed via this hole on the side of the knee. And this was something I missed during the cleaning was to make sure that this hole um, was nice and clean and, and free of any residue. I think that's probably why this took a little bit more effort uh, to seat than I was expecting. And now the knee lock shaft can be slid into this hole uh, in the front of the casting. The shaft is held in place with two different set screws. The first one to go in is a dog point and the second one acts as a jam nut. Now I can insert the elevating shaft assembly. There are two bearings on the shaft, one on each end that each fit into a part of the casting. And then three socket head cap screws secure the bearing retainer ring into the knee itself. And now next, uh, after a little bit of oil, is the Z-axis dial and the lock nut, and then followed by the clutch insert. Mm -hmm. 
And now with the handle on, I can take it for a test drive. Uh, cranking the handle up and down uh, is very smooth. Um, very happy with how this is turning out so far. The last thing to do for the knee is to install the new way wipers and covers. Uh, these are made of a type of felt material. I first soaked them in as much oil as I could uh, before setting them in place and then securing the cover with a cap screw. And that's it for the knee. It is mechanically complete. And so now the only thing left to do is everything. Thanks for watching.